This is the largest disinflationary shock the world will ever have. And it will keep playing out as these other exponential technologies become implemented. Just think, I was in New York when I was reading a thread um, on Twitter. I was in an Uber and it was a thread about the rise of autonomous vehicles in California and how this guy, whether he's in the industry, he's around the tech industry, he's like, you know, three years ago I'd see a couple of these things and now I see them every day, 10 times a day. Um, and I looked around me in New York City and every car was an Uber, a taxi, a bus driver. And you're like, oh my God, AI, all of this stuff together is the biggest disinflationary shock the world will ever face. The WTO agreement and China entering it was gigantic, but this is of a different order of magnitude. So that's good in some respects, but that disinflationary shock is all part of this work replacement. Why is it disinflationary? Because it replaces humans. We, we are currently witnessing the dawn of the most significant deflationary shock humanity will ever experience. The advent of artificial intelligence has rendered humans relatively obsolete, coupled with advancements in robotics that enhance efficiency. As a result, the cost of labor, goods, and services is continuously and exponentially decreasing. This perspective, championed by Roe Pal, founder of Real Vision and a macroeconomic investor, is often overlooked by other analysts and investors in both traditional and crypto markets. Contrary to popular belief, Pal contends that inflation will persist longer than expected. He predicts that the widespread adoption and proliferation of AI and robotics will drive prices down so dramatically that deflation will ensue. The evidence supporting this argument lies in major companies worldwide already replacing thousands of workers with AI technology. This trend signifies the validity of Pal's viewpoint, and it is only the beginning of this transformative journey. So, why does this matter, and what does it mean for cryptocurrency? If we indeed witness deflation instead of the anticipated inflation, it will prompt the Federal Reserve and central banks to lower interest rates and increase money printing to stimulate economies. In such a scenario, assets that thrive the most are those positioned at the highest risk level, notably technology stocks and cryptocurrencies. Therefore, if PAL's deflationary thesis proves accurate, it bodes well for investors in the crypto market. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. And it replaces humans at a scale. So it's kind of like, I think why people are accepting of it so fast, because it's so inevitable, it's because there is no other choice. What are you gonna do, shake your fist at the sky? And we don't know what it means. We don't know what it means for work. We know that if you get it right, you augment yourself on a scale of which you cannot comprehend. Augmented humans is a very attractive thing. So we become super productive units. That's okay once the baby boomers have died off. It's not okay when we've got too many of us around still because there's, we just don't need as many humans. That's the hypothesis. Now, could it be that we create enough productive activity through this can change in productivity that we can employ more humans in these kind of areas. I don't know. But the problem is we've got robots coming as well. So if the AI doesn't get your job, the robots will get your job. So it's a very, very scary place for work. But oh my God, if you leverage this, I think it's a renaissance for both global economies and for people themselves. You know, one of my hypotheses for Web3 was that the rise of all of this is leading to a need to support incomes for people. This is a universal basic income argument. Fine. And there's ways of solving that both in the private sector and state sector. State sector is a problem because we don't have enough money, so we have to tax the robots maybe to get the money. But we're all underfunded, we've got this problem with debt. There is a way that you and I can restrict our data online because we have agency over our data and therefore sell it to the platforms and the advertisers and get income for that. Okay, that's that's nice, but probably not enough. And I was talking to Yatsui and I had a big breakthrough, which was universal basic equity, which is in Web3, in these decentralized nations, digital nation states, societies, communities, you can own the assets or the currency of those communities and you can be rewarded for being a good community member. And we're seeing that all over the place now. It's pretty nascent, but it's everywhere. Um, and if that is the case, 
then we can replace our purpose. And our purpose could be society and community. Now, what that means, could it be for work output? Could it be for leisure output? It doesn't really matter. Could it be for cultural output? For sure. You know, for sure, Louis Vuitton um, understand this. For sure, Nike understands this. Is the loyalty of Web3 and tokenized assets, whether it's a loyalty currency, community currency like Starbucks, or whether it's an NFT um, like Adidas, these things are making people participate in the success of th those brands, those cultures. And we will see this in music and, you know, we'll see it all over the place. So I'm actually interested in how do we adapt because we will not be able to all be supercomputing AI geniuses with amazing prompt skills and even prompt skills go away pretty soon. Um, and there'll be such a prol proliferation of newsletters. We're already seeing it. How many bloody AI newsletters are there? There's like 50. <laughs> And they've all come and they're all being written by ChatGPT4. So there's excess content, excess everything else, and we're gonna need a purpose and a meaning and a place of trust. And a place of trust is these digital societies online. It's the digital network state idea of Balaji, something I've been talking about for a very long time, is this way that we live our digital lives. Like um, you and I, we've never met. I've spoken to you so many times. <laughs> I'll consider you a friend. We hit each other up, we'll chat about stuff, we will talk to each other in this digital representation. We live in the same community, which is somewhere the nexus of FinTwit and and, um, and crypto Twitter. Um, and those are you know, the overlaps. And we both kind of in the, in, the, in the media area as well. So there's, there's these number of overlaps of these digital societies that we both belong to. And that's very different a world than it was before 2008 that didn't exist. I mean, Facebook was 2012. So again, it's one of the answers for society is staring us in the face, which is we can find a purpose. And the purpose is humanity, culture, brand, businesses by doing it together with more agency where we get to choose. I mean, what I love about these digital sovereign states is you can just pick up your assets, sell them and leave and move to the next one. It's really hard for you to leave the United States. My wife is a US citizen and we live in the Cayman Islands. And it's a nightmare because US tax and US jurisdiction, because the US is actually a very unfree place once you travel. You can't open a bank account. You can't, you can't do anything. It's actually very difficult. Um, so, but these digital sovereign states, you can just sell it. You just move on and move on to the next one. You know, don't like Bored Ape, I want to join CryptoPunks. I don't like Ethereum, I want to join Solana. You know, I don't like, you know, I like Bitcoin. I want to just own Bitcoin. It's it's becomes very, very, very interesting. So I think there's a solve there. I think so. Let's go to the broader one, which is society itself. I, society is going to struggle with the exponential age, not just AI. It's going to really struggle to understand what is truth, what is my role, who humans are. And where is this all leading to? Because if you put unlimited energy at a low price, virtually zero, you add AI robotics and all of this stuff, you add networks from space outside of sovereign control, which is what's happening. I mean, people don't really understand space is a non-sovereign place of which there is a massive commercialization going on on a scale most people don't understand. We've got... Oh, I've lost my train of thought, but we've we've got all of this kind of mega trends going on, and for society itself, I don't, I don't know how we can keep up, and how we do not draw the dot 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 add quantum computing end of humanity. I, I can't I cannot get there where we don't have that, because once you put exponential computing power with exponential knowledge with which self learns with zero cost of energy. I mean, humans are pointless. And that's very hard. It's all the same thing. It's the digitization of knowledge is happening now. It's all the digitization trend. And it's logical place is a metaverse style experience. You know, we're all too anchored on snow crash or whatever to think mm -hmm. of how 
a metaverse is, but this is, and I say this all the time, this is a metaverse experience that you and I are in now. So everything becomes, if we talked about these digital societies that the world has to pivot towards because we live in this world where we may not be working for corporations, it may be a different world. Well, so therefore humans are humans and we'd like to have a more interactive world of which we can operate and live in if we're gonna spend most of our time there. That's the metaverse. And what we're seeing is the nexus of all of these things. So the faster the compute power, the better the rendering. We've seen that with Unreal Engine 5. You know, there was a video out yesterday. Was, I couldn't tell it wasn't video. We're seeing that with what's coming out of the AI. So the compute power keeps accelerating with Moore's law. Then the use of the compute power gets more efficient by AI. And it makes these digital worlds become easier. And I think I I'm having a feeling that the next exponential age bomb is going to be the Apple, um, whatever it is, the apple a thing that happens, I think it's in June, because Apple are launching their VR stroke AR glasses. And everyone's like, yeah, well, so what? You know, Facebook have had their... Been here before, right? Yeah. But Apple don't do that. It's like, you know, there was a Kindle and then the iPad came out. There was music stuff and then there was the iPod. What have they got that can make this a game changer? And I've been following this story for a while. So somebody told me, I can't remember who the hell it was, told me, oh, by the way, your iPhone pings your local environment like five million times a minute. I'm like, what? It's like, yeah, it's mapping out your in total environment. There's a reason why all the new Macs have like 30% of their GPU is not being used in the chip processing power, right? There's something coming. So then I started hearing that Apple had basically created a 3D map of the world. Again, don't know how complete it is, but that everything was this 3D contextualization, which was this AR, VR nexus. And then we started seeing the Nerf technology coming. And you're like, oh, so it exists. And you know, I follow Robert Scoble, and he's been very good in, in driving this conversation forwards. It feels that Apple is about to change the entire game in Metaverse by creating a photo real 3D personalized map of the world, of your world or other worlds, which can all be strung together. I don't even know what that means yet, but I know again it changes everything. Because why do you and I, you know, you're in upstate New York and I'm in the Cayman Islands, we're in a 2D experience. You know, why are you not sitting in the barber's chair and, me, and us chatting, right? This new experience, it's that. It's the fact that we can go for a walk down by the river near you and chat while we're doing this. It's like, okay. And that, if you go back to our earlier conversation about how humans fit into this world, in a digitized world where everything's fragmented into these digital sovereign states, then this is an obvious way forward. So I think, the moment nobody's expecting is the metaverse moment, potentially, and it's gonna come from Apple and not Facebook. And then we've got the self-driving car moment that probably comes after that. Those are what I can see coming forwards, but you know, I'm still trying to keep up with, because you don't know where it's gonna come from, what the next big thing is. But I, I'm, I'm just getting a hunch that it's the Apple thing. So we have Raul Pal sharing his perspective on why he believes we are currently at the forefront of the most significant deflationary shock the world has ever experienced. It's difficult to dispute his arguments. The rapid adoption of artificial intelligence has surpassed even that of cryptocurrencies, making it the fastest adopted technology in history. We've witnessed this with ChatGPT reaching 100 million users within two months of its launch, and the subsequent stream of AI-driven innovations emerging every week without any signs of slowing down. When we factor in robotics, the cost of labor is expected to plummet rapidly. This effect is already evident as major institutions choose to replace thousands of workers with AI technology. Over the next six months, we will observe how these developments impact the numbers, particularly if inflation continues to decline. Raul Pal has previously expressed his belief that we may even see negative inflation by the end of the year. Such an outcome would provide significant validation for Pal's thesis. In the event that it materializes, 
we can anticipate swift action from central banks and the Federal Reserve to lower interest rates and implement monetary stimulus to boost the economy. This, in turn, would have a positive impact on crypto prices. Now, it's time to hear your thoughts. Do you believe the widespread adoption and proliferation of artificial intelligence and robotics will lead to deflation, or do you think it is too early and inflation will persist? Share your opinions in the comments section below. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.